Okay. Well, yeah. So basically, also, so say if I've, I've come with this problem before, is where I've actually got a contract, and then the seller just goes MIA and never never replies back, and after they sign the paperwork. And so I did get somebody to, that I was working for to place a lien on the property, but doesn't that doesn't that have to be in the contract like prior hand? Isn't that illegal if you do that without like letting them know beforehand? Don't do a lien. Do an affidavit affidavit equal interest. Do you have earnest money already put down? Yes. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not a lawyer here. Most investors could do that. It just depends, though. Now, so the, the truth of the matter is. When you file, so you're not really doing a lien because the only way you file a lien is if you've had a service rendered on the property and you didn't get paid for it. So mm -hmm. recording a lien is going to get wiped out in a heartbeat. Yeah, won't be a lien. Okay. So you have to record something on record. It's basically called clouding the title. So it's called a memorandum of yeah, affidavit. Yeah, I didn't mean a lien. I meant that um, no. what we're talking about. That's what happened. But the thing is, it's happened again, and I never got to see the end result because I was working for my mentor at the time when he did it. So that's why I'm asking because what, what, so if I don't actually have the money to do to to make it, like if I don't have the money to buy the property, right? And I mm -hmm. and I file that against them. Isn't that against the law because I don't really have the money to do it? Well, so I'm going to tell everybody watching this: if you do not have experience, and I'm talking like the years in the business. It is reckless to file these these memorandums because now it can come back and bite you in the butt with an attorney and a judge. And if you cannot prove every square inch of your business, you now get sued for defamation of title. Yeah. And it can be very, very expensive because if you put that seller in a bind, these are the situations I want everyone to avoid. How do you avoid it? You prepare yourself. Private money, hard money, soft money. Like right. Make sure you have an out on your contract if that's what you want to do. When you file these memorandums, it opens you up to a lawsuit. And right. if you're the attorney, if you do not have experience, they'll eat you alive. I'm just telling you, man. Like I've been through this. They're going to want to see your escrow um, the deposit letter, the date it was put in. They're going to look at everything. They're going to go look at your history, how many houses you closed on, your experience level, and yeah. then they're going to depose the homeowner. And they're always going to believe the homeowner. If you have people falling out of contract, I'm going to give you a recommendation. You got to like sit down and go, okay, what am I doing that people keep falling out of contract? Because some people have to sell us remorse. We get it all the time. The best way when someone falls out is, are you doing it local or virtual? Virtual. Okay. You got to get in contact with that seller because there's some point you are not driving home for them to back out. I very rarely get somebody back out unless they're coerced by another person, either another wholesaler or a real estate agent. And we always get to the bottom of it. So when you're doing your contracts, you got to find a way to engage them more because if they're falling out that easily, you're not getting your point across on the contracts. You, we have a legitimate bona fide deal. We're giving the deposit. I'm giving it to the title company. The title company will call you tomorrow, start getting all your information. If you're just writing contracts and they're never hearing from you again, or mm -hmm. like a title company or any type of attorney, they get a little wishy washy, especially if you're doing it virtual. So I'd find some things to anchor them more to your deal. Like I'm not scared to tell people, like you ever deal with sellers and they're just wishy washy? Go listen, Joan. Like this is a legal document you're signing. I know DocuSign doesn't feel as real, but right. when we go forward, I give it to the title company. Once we do that, it costs money to pull the title and we're on the hook for it. Right. So if you have any reservations, let's talk about it now. So when you get one that are like a little squirrely, you're better off having that hard conversation up front and finding them they're going to ghost you and disappear. And then you file a memo, uh, somebody convinces you to file the memo. And, right the back interest. Yeah, and then you have no idea what you're doing. You haven't closed on the house before. Then you're right. the one that's going to get sued. And you're like, I'm never doing wholesaling again. This is a dangerous business. I don't like filing the memos unless I'm being taken advantage of. So if you have sales remorse and someone's giving you $5,000 more, that's not fair. But keep in mind, if you just go and cloud it and walk away from it. And by the way, this stuff can come back to you like five years later. Like, say you're completely out of the business, you filed it. They can, they can get you for like five years. Like it's crazy what an uh, attorney can go after. So I don't like filing them without at least running it by a title company or an attorney. And you better have like, like a legitimate excuse. And by the way, when you file it, you have to prove you showed up to try to close on the property. You were ready to fund it and you were ready to move forward. If you can't prove that stuff, you are going to lose if you get countersued on this. Oh, that, that makes more sense for the way you're putting the perspective. So say if I don't have the money, but I do transactional funding, will that count as me technically having the money? Or are they still going to say you still didn't have the money? You have to show like, so if you're going to do that, you have to make a point to set a date at the title company, show up and have everything ready to go as painful as it sounds, but that shows you are ready, willing, and able to do it. If they okay. want to sit there and go, well, you weren't the buyer. Well, as long as it's an assignable contract, it's completely legal. But you, you got to work at the root of the problem and find out why these people are getting out these contracts. I'm just telling you that's your bigger problem. You're going to lose some people virtually. It's just the name of the game. You okay. got to find a way to anchor them in a little bit better. Just say, listen, you're entering the legal contract. If you got any questions, let's talk about it now. And then the minute after they sign the contract, usually that night or the next day, you should have somebody at the title company reaching out, getting their contact information, their mortgage company information. That way they go, oh crap, man, I'm on the hook. It, it wasn't, it wasn't just like, uh, it wasn't just Aaron just uh, saying, hey, um, I spoke to uh, June over the title company. Right. And then they feel a little bit more obligated. So I find more ways to time into your contracts. Yep. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rick. I appreciate no it. Y'all have a blessed night. Okay. Awesome. Have a good one. Thanks.